Hello, George. How did you get in here? I kept my key. What are you doing here? Came to see you. Well, isn't it a little late for that, Blanche? Oh, it's later than you think, George. Fact is, it's as late as it gets. Who's he? What is he doing here? Who are you? Ed Hammer. Was that your, your latest boyfriend? <laughs> sort of. What's he looking for? What are you looking for? There's no one here. He's alone. Mm -hmm. uh, Blanche, if this is some kind of a trick to get me to pay more alimony, it won't work. You mean he really doesn't know what's going on? Looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, 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 what's so funny? <laughs> this is the end, George. That's what's so funny. Professor, you're coming with us. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not going anywhere with you at all. Move. That was my... I said move. Ah. Oh. One more time, Professor, and we'll carry you out. An evil that calls in the night. And like the cold, bony finger of death beckons a joyless ride into the void of the unknown. What is that? Dread lurks within us all. F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote that in the dark of man's soul, it is always three o'clock in the morning. Is that clock of darkness now striking the hour of the end for Professor George Manners? Hold back the hands of time. He's not ready. He's not yet ready. is not ready. He does not know it yet, but a cavern of doom yawns obscenely, and he stands on the edge of it, as if on the edge of the world, the ground crumbling under his feet, ready to plunge him down and down and down. Can his wit and his reason stay that fall? Stay the clock without hands that looms out there in the dark of eternity? He must escape. If this is a kidnapping, there's no one anywhere who'll pay a ransom for me. She knows that. Go on, George. Just keep moving. I mean, I'm not worth anything to the government. I'm going to let you drive, Professor. Try anything cute, I'll be right behind you. Straight down this road. What is it? You do have the insurance papers on him? 
his salary and he's been paying for it every month. It's been a long time since George and I went for a drive. You two plan to kill me, is that it? Oh, Blanche, Blanche. How much? 50,000, 100,000? How much is a man's life worth?
Guns are cheap. No bones broken. We got all the time in the world, Blanche. There's his wallet. There's nothing seriously wrong with him, just a few cuts and bruises. He won't let me touch him. He keeps saying his wife and some guy keep trying to kill him. What kind of shape's he in? <laughs> nothing physically wrong with him. Precinct 17. McCarthy at Oxford Falls. You better put me out of the lieutenant. Right. Lieutenant? McCarthy, this isn't just a routine call. I just identified the man as a Professor George Manners. You know the guy working on that hush-hush nuclear program at the university? What kind of shape is he in? Well, the doc says it's okay to move him. He keeps on saying that his wife and some guy are trying to kill him. I'll run a fast check on it. Okay, get him in. No, I'll get him back as soon as I can get a car here. Professor, I've backtracked these records three times. Your ex-wife has been dead for three years. Why, that's... I saw her myself! Ed Hammer died in the same car accident three years ago. That's impossible! I saw them both in my house not more than two hours ago. Professor, I'm afraid you've had a nasty fall. Don't believe me. I saw them! Both of them were in my house not more than two hours ago! Oh, Rupe. Am I glad to see you? What, what are you doing here? Who are you and how did you get past the desk, Sergeant? I'm Dr. Taylor. I've been uh, treating Professor Manners for the past six months. How did you know I was here? Well, HQ made inquiries. Now, that seems to be the trouble. George, George would you tell this man, please, would you tell him that I, I do not hallucinate? Oh, no, no, he's, he's perfectly fine. His yeah. only problem has been one of... Amnesia, you know, it, it comes in spells. Well, I wasn't aware of that. No, no, don't you worry, George. Say, um, why don't we drive out to your place and we'll talk about it there, hmm? mm. You got your car? I'm sure, it's right outside. Yeah. It's okay, we'll out here. Tell him, huh? Yeah, I want you. Okay. I'm sure you realize you've been under a strain. <laughs> Everything will be all right. I can give you a sedative. If you insist, I can stay the night. No, no, no. It's a, they're, they're in there, I tell you. I know it. Oh, I'm sure somebody was there. Well, maybe a man and woman asking directly. No, oh, no, it was Blanche and that other person. They're in there. I ah, saw them. Look, let's go in and have a look. No, I don't want to go in there. It's all right, George. It's all right. Come on. Come on. Come on in, George. Hi, George. Right, George. Oh, no. What are you talking about, George? There's no one here but you and I. I'm not crazy. Blanche is over there. He's over there. Can't you see them? I don't think we can risk transporting you. Transporting me where? We're gonna have to do it here. 
To what? Now. How have you been, George? You haven't written in months. Fine, I've been busy, but this can't be because... Because why, George? Because you're dead! Stop running, George! Stop running! Stop running, George! Stop running! Stop running. Not there, George! The train's coming! Come on, 
George. Come on, George. At the 20, the 15, the 10, it's a touchdown! Easy, George. It was a short circuit in the nerve center transistor. We have to repair the damage by reprogramming therapy. Well, whatever it is, let's get this project moving. Mr. Secretary, a project of transplanting the brains of the most prominent deceased scientists into a humanoid is progressing, but, well, now and then one of the robots breaks down. You see, sir, the real Professor Manners, whose bank of knowledge and experience is programmed into this robot, died ten years ago. How did he die? We don't know, sir. He found his body on a football field at the university. Most peculiar. Short circuit in the nerve center caused the robot to think that he was truly human. I am not a robot. I am human. I am human. My wife, my... And his wife collected the insurance on his life, but she and a man named Hammer died in a car crash two years ago. Now, poor George is one of our older models. Today, the memory bank, well, it went out of control, and I'm sure projected images that exceeded the toleration balance in the brain, so... Well, we've decided to dismantle it. How long will it take to reprogram it? A couple of weeks, sir. Be a shame to waste a mind like that. The bank installed in the robot went berserk and produced in what was once the mind, intelligence and human emotion of Professor George Manners images of a hell long ago forgotten, ending in a grotesque and distorted tapestry of life gone by, now to be dismantled and consigned to a crypt in oblivion. Sleep well, George Manners. It's over now. It's over. So, until we meet next, this is Anthony Quayle saying there is a touch of evil in all of us. Good night.